And welcome back. Rick Bloom here from the Brush Athletic Department with a very special treat today. We have our head football coach, Ricky Powers, with us today. And of course, Ricky, you played at the University of Michigan, um, made a name for yourself, even went on to the NFL. So this is a chance for the Brush community to really get to know you a little bit and what kind of attributes you'll bring to the program. So I guess the way I'd first like to start it out is you have a long career as a player, as a fan, as a coach. What is it about the game of football that really gets you fired up even to this day? And it's like the game of life. I mean, you know, you're going to have ups and downs and uh, you got to learn how to rebound mm -hmm. and, and, and get back up and get to the next play. So, you know, I, I, I use that as a tool for our young people to get them to understand that, man, you're going to have, you're gonna have some, some, some falls, but can you get up? Can you get up and move and keep moving and, you know, get your family back in order and, and get everything back together? So that's the way I use the sport. I love it. Okay. And since you are new to the brush community, not football, but the brush community, what would you say are some of the strengths and weaknesses of a good football coach? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Of a good football coach? Well, uh, I think you, you have to definitely have discipline, instill discipline, and you have to be consistent. You know, I think that's the biggest thing is discipline and consistency because, you know, you want to make sure your yes is yes and your no is no at all times, no matter what. And the kids know when, when they're dealing with you that they're dealing with things that are pretty much black and white. And, you know, and, and you don't waver from that. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, um, it's a different world we live in, okay. but those, those principles can stay the same. All right. Now, you have played in the past yourself. How has your experience as a player at various levels maybe helped you as a coach and, and making certain decisions? I tell you what, I remember those humbling moments I had in, in, in the sport. You know, when I thought I was that guy and then they brought another guy in who was that guy. And, you know, so it's one of those things where you just look back and say, you know, I've, I've had these, these situations happen to me and I know I had to deal with them. And, you know, I want to make sure I, I teach the young men how to deal with those, those situations in life and even in the sport. So, um, you know, this is more personal experience than anything sure. else. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here. Any favorite coaches or any inspirational coaches from your younger days to where you are now and maybe try to model yourself a little bit after? Well, I'll tell you what, man, my head coach, Coach Tim Flossie, um, he just passed away not too long ago. He was amazing. He was a great motivator. And that was one of the things that I took from his coaching and even coaching with him. Um, you know, when I, w I was very fortunate when I played college football. You know, I played, I was Bo's last recruit. Mm -hmm. I, um, I played for Coach Moeller. Uh, we had a lot of great coaches on staff as well and um, got a chance to play for Bill Belichick when I was in Cleveland. Wow. And I, I got a little, a little bit from everybody. And um, the one thing I had to learn from all of those guys was patience. All right. You have to be patient, man. You can't, everything's not gonna happen now, but you know, just build to that point. So yeah, I learned, I learned some things. I learned a couple, it took me a while though. Okay. I, I'm not a master of it, man. I'm still learning, but right. I'm getting better. I'm guessing that in this first year at Brush, even though you bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to the, to the program, um, it's still year one for you. So you're, you're understanding who the players are, who the coaches are, and you know, the administration. Um, is that kind of what you're up against? Like, no I got to see what's out there? No doubt, but hey, the expectation is to win a championship. Yeah. I mean, that's the bottom line. And, and you know, I don't want to wait to win it. We okay. want to win it now. Okay. So. Um, if we have those, that, that talent and we have those attributes to win, we, we can do that now. So the biggest thing we have to do here at Brush is just change the way, you know, I think the, the kids think and the community thinks, man. I think it's, I think in the past it's probably been one of those things where, you know, you just played football, you know, it was a sport, you know, we, we don't come with that energy. We come with, you know, this is something you can do at the next level, at okay. the college level. And uh, this is something you can do uh, to help pay for school. You know, so we, we, we're approaching this a little differently than, than the average person. Okay. Now we all, you know, if, if you're off to a 5-0 and start, that's not too hard a road to navigate because we all do well on the mountaintop. But when you're in the valley and the team's struggling, maybe a couple losses in a row, what do you do, Coach Powers, to kind of keep people motivated, keep their focus in the game and, and have them realize, hey, you can pull out of this? Well, the big thing is, you know, you, you always, you take steps back and you go back to your basics. You know, you go back to basic football. And the second thing you do is you, you harp on things that you do well. And, you know, we, we correct the things that we're doing wrong, but the things that we do well, we want to build on that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of coaches, I think, they get so, they panic when they start, things start to fall apart and they just start thinking about all the bad things. Well, well no, I want to think about, okay, what are we doing well? Sure. Let's do this first. Okay, now let's work on these things that we need to work on. You know what I mean? So, and everything's correctable. 
that's a good thing. Okay. You know, everything's correctable. Uh, probably not a fair question for you because we're early on yet, but, but uh, from this point, how do you feel the Brush Arc team for 2022 stacks up? Um, some things to look forward to for Arc Nation out there? Oh, I tell you what, man, we got some athletes, man. I'm excited. Um, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's a, it's a mentality we, we we're working on, but I think um, it'll be some great surprises. Mm -hmm. I think we got some we got some guys that can get, that can do some things sure. and some young guys that are showing up, too, which is great. So um, talent wise, I, I'll stack them up against anybody. Okay. Talent wise, we can play. The big thing is, is that, you know, do we know how to win? And that's the big thing we have to learn to do okay. is win. Now, to, to that point, you're a high school coach, so it brings with it certain aspects that maybe the pro level doesn't, and maybe even college. Uh, how do you handle the parent who comes to you and says, my kid deserves to be playing and he's not, what, what do you, you know, do with that? I, I appreciate their opinion, you know, and, and, and um, you know, the one thing that I'm always gonna respect and I want parents to respect as well is that, you know, they have a job that they do and I will never come up there and question them about the job that they do. And I, and I, I hope to get that same respect. But if that does not happen, um, we will set up a time to talk and then I will lay everything out for them so they'll understand. And the biggest thing parents need to do though, honestly, is talk to their kid. Okay. I think that's the biggest thing. I think sometimes parents jump the gun and they, they think what they, they think what they, they believe what their kid is. Sure. And sometimes you need to just really sit down and talk to them and see first, I mean, is your kid like willing to do the things that he needs to do to get to this point? And uh, I think that's lost in the, in the conversation sometimes. So, you know, the, the, the middle man is usually the, the, the child that doesn't get talked to and, and, you know, they jump the gun because of emotions, you know what I mean? But one thing I'll never do, and I know a lot of coaches are probably doing, is make promises because I can't. You know, it's a sport. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Sure. Um, all I can do is, you know, promise them two things that we're going to care for them and we're gonna teach them football. And, and, and that's it, you know. And, and one more thing I can, I can honestly promise is that we will work our butts off to get them in school. Now, looking back over your entire career, fan, player, coach, um, what would you say to Coach Ricky Powers makes a good football player? What do you look for in a young man? Work ethic, man. If a kid wants to work and he wants better, you know, and I think every kid needs a why. Mm -hmm. Why are you playing the sport and what are, what are you trying to gain from this? Are you, what, what are you trying to accomplish playing the sport? And I think that's in any sport. Sure. You know, anything you do, you know, you want to know what, what's your end game on this thing. So, um, you know, the, the want to is a beautiful thing. I, I love that. I don't care what the kid's skill level is. If he's out here every day, comes every day, it's 150 degrees. It's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, if they're willing to show up every day, that's mm -hmm. telling me something. That kid wants something. So okay. let's, let's figure it out. All right. Well, Coach, I want to thank you for coming on coming online with us here and wishing you a great 2022 fall season. That, Welcome to Brush. I'm honored to be here and thank you. I appreciate right. you.